Hi everybody, this is Stuart Barlow. Welcome to my final video looking at aspects of the John Dobson talk that I was going to do at the old low light. This time I'm going to look at some of Dobson's buildings in North Shields done in the later period of his career and also something in colour coats. The first building we're going to look at is Dobson's Town Hall on Savile Street in North Shields. The Town Hall was in fact built in two phases. The first phase, at the corner of Howard Street and Savile Street, was built in 1844 and it consisted of a courthouse and police station. The second phase, extending along Savile Street to Norfolk Street, was built a year later in 1845. When it opened, it included a savings bank, mechanics library, museum and offices. Overall, the Town Hall is an example of Dobson's informal Tudor style, which he adopted later in his career, where the emphasis is not on civic monumentality, so common in other civic buildings of the period, but on a design that seems to fit in with the existing street scale of North Shields. Dobson used a variety of features to achieve his Tudor style, such as the decorated gables at the junction with Howard Street, seen here on the left, and the battlemented range in the central section of the building running along Savile Street, shown on the right. Then, at the Norfolk Street end of the building, Dobson inserted these first and second floor oriel windows. Although the building was finished before the Bow of Time Mouth was created, it seems that it had always been considered to be a town hall. A newspaper report in May 1845 tells us that a Portrait of the Duke of Northumberland was to be placed in the new town hall in North Shields. That was four years before the incorporation of the Boer in 1849. In 1846, Dobson was a member of the committee appointed to solicit subscriptions for a new breakwater to protect Cullicote Haven. Dobson designed this new breakwater, which, was, which would replace the old one, which was 150 years old and in a dilapidated state. The list of subscribers for the new breakwater, seen here, was headed, as you might expect, by the Duke of Northumberland and organisations like the Corporation of Newcastle and Trinity House. But it also included local people, such as William Linskill and John Richardson Proctor, as well as prominent Quakers from Newcastle, such as Jonathan Priestman. Dobson's Stone Breakwater has lasted pretty well for the last 170 years. In 1859, Dobson designed an office and a group of workers' cottages for the Tyne Improvement Commission at Northumberland Dock. While both the office and cottages have been demolished, this late 19th century Ordnance Survey map shows that the only office building located around the Northumberland docks was adjacent to the entrance lock. The Shields Daily News described the Northumberland Dock office building as a neoclassical building with ashless stone, which is illustrated here in this photograph from the North Shields Library. Even towards the end of his career, Dobson was still designing neoclassical buildings. Over 40 years after first working on the Tynemouth Lodge estate for Colonel Linskill, Dobson again would work for the estate, but this time for his son, Captain William Linskill. The estate lay north of the Tynemouth Road and its western and northern boundaries were formed by what is now Linskill Terrace. After Captain Linskill moved to the Moick estate near Walkworth in 1857, he put the Tynemouth Lodge estate up for sale, and over the next year or so, the lodge itself 
seen here in this painting, was sold and then demolished. After Tarmouth Lodge was demolished, the eastern portion of the estate, beyond Washington Terrace, outlined in red on this map, was auctioned off in 1860 as freehold building land based on John Dobson's layout plans. It was said that a great portion of this ground commands a fine sea view. I wonder if that was really true. Now it should be remembered that Dobson didn't design individual houses. But the layout of the site would be the last work Dobson did in the North Shields and Tymouth area. Only two years later, in 1862, John Dobson suffered a stroke which left him partially paralysed, from which he never fully recovered. And Dobson died at his new Bridge Street home, seen here, on Sunday the 8th of January, 1865, aged 77. He was buried in Jesmond Cemetery. Well, that's the last of my Dobson videos, but uh, when I'm able to do my talk at the Old Lower Light, I hope you will come along and find out more about Dobson's work in North Shields and Tymouth, and Dobson, about, and Dobson the man, as well as the architect. In the meantime, stay home, stay safe, and look after yourselves. Bye for now.